Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Today we're going to look at idioms with two parts to them, usually separated by the word and. They're called binomial pairs, okay, that's the technical name for them, but you'll never hear them being called that. I don't even think British people know their names. Let me give you some examples. Safe and sound, weird and wonderful, pros and cons, odds and ends, bread and butter. When it's an idiom with two bits, these are called binomial pairs. Okay, and we're going to talk about those today. Just before we do that, um, weird and wonderful is one of the ones I used a second ago. And that's because I want to tell you a little bit about some of the weird and wonderful hobbies that some British people have. You know, before the internet came, and the internet keeps us all busy now, but before that came, some of us had some really peculiar hobbies. I mean, even by... British standards, some of them were a little bit odd. For example, today, one fairly common hobby is bell ringing. Yeah, there's people in every city, maybe even towns, who just love to ring bells. They go to the local church and they ring them just to practice. They can make songs with the sounds of the bells, and they are very, very protective about their hobby. People who are into this kind of thing are called campanologists, the people who ring the bells. It's very common to be a campanologist here. I mean, I wouldn't do it. The last thing I would want is to stand with a group of people in a church tower pulling a rope. Oh no, no, not my thing at all. But campanology is very common here, bell ringing. And another one is bird watching, which is referred to as ornithology. And uh, people who do it are called ornithologists, bird watchers. Another hobby that I never really understood. I mean, why would you want to stand in a field with a pair of binoculars trying to catch a sight of a bird which is just about to say bye (laughs) before it flies away. Uh, But for some people, that's really important. In fact, very close to my town, there's a very famous nature center where ornithologists gather and they can look for different birds around there. Um, I'm sure it's a very rewarding hobby But to sit in a field for hours just waiting to see, I think I would probably have the camera set up and uh, leave it there and go home and watch it on the internet (laughs) or even in the car, maybe. Some people do that in their gardens, don't they? They set up little uh, cameras so that they can watch the birds that come into the garden. Actually, yesterday in the news... Uh, there was a man who realized that in his garden hut, his garden shed, where he keeps all of his tools, something was happening. Because he used to come in the next day and find a lot of the smaller things, particularly nails and uh, nuts and bolts, uh, all tidied up and placed into a nice box. And he thought that maybe someone was playing some kind of trick on him. So he set up a camera and he found it was a little mouse. During the night, a tiny little mouse would come in and would start tidying the place. Uh, It would put nails, nuts and bolts, you know, the kind of things that the mice could carry, and would put them all in in a, a box unclear why um nobody really knows why the mouse was doing this but it just goes to show that um these days with technology 
it's possible to do any hobby you want purely from home with little cost. I mean, I used to absolutely love radio. I used to spend a lot of money buying radio equipment and putting up huge aerials in the garden and uh, getting stuff imported, you know, like uh, digital receivers and scanners and stuff. And now I just download an app. It's so much easier, <laughs> really. So anyway, uh, Weird and Wonderful is one way that uh, you can talk about, for example, British people and their eccentricity. I mean, bell ringing. Yeah? That's uh, <laughs> it's difficult to beat that one, isn't it? So that's the subject of today. All right, so let's do a few of these. So we did Weird and Wonderful, which just is a way to talk about something weird, but something which also gives us satisfaction or makes us money. Um, something which is weird and wonderful. <clears throat> so British eccentricity, weird and wonderful. Um, safe and sound means to be in a secure and unharmed condition. So, for example, you could call your husband or your wife or whoever, and you could say, oh, by the way, um, did the children get home from school okay? And the other person might say, oh, yes, don't worry, they're safe and sound. Safe and sound. Um, you also could use it when you call your wife or husband to say, uh, oh, did my Amazon package arrive? Oh, yeah, it's here, safe and sound. Or you could call the Amazon depot and say, will my package be delivered today? And they'll say, oh, yeah, we have it here. It's safe and sound. It'll be coming to you later. So safe and sound is very common in British English. And uh, I'll be staying at home today all wrapped up safe and sound because it's too cold to go out. It's freezing out there. Um, safe and sound. Now, another one that I'm sure you've probably heard of because it's one of these things which English teachers love to give their students, is pros and cons. You might have seen that in an essay you've written, and it refers to the advantages and disadvantages. You know when you're in an English class and the teacher says something like, please write an essay about the pros and cons of social media, and you think, oh, God. <laughs> And you end up using it in the answer, the pros and cons, you know, it's uh, quite a common one. So that's another example of what we're talking about. Uh, very common, very common. Uh, high and dry is another one, signifying being left in a difficult situation of something. So you could use that with finances or oh, the price of fuel has gone up again. Um, I need to make sure I have enough money uh, in my bank account. I don't want to be left high and dry, stuck on the motorway. Another one might be, um, I don't really want to lose my job. I know there's redundancies, but if I am left high and dry, I'll have no choice except to seek for another job, to seek another job, okay, to look for another job, high and dry. So it's about being left in a difficult or vulnerable position, but not vulnerable as in illness, just vulnerable uh, because you could maybe not be able to afford something or your position with whatever could be weaker, high and dry. Um, when's the last time I used high and dry? Oh, yeah, when the bus didn't turn up, I was left high and dry, standing on the pavement, not wanting to be there, wishing I was somewhere else instead. That's an ABBA song, isn't it? Wishing I was somewhere else instead. Uh, ah, yes, one of us. One of us is crying. One of Us is Lying. I don't know if you remember the ABBA song, One of Us, uh, but uh, Agnetha was telling us that um, she uh, was wishing she was somewhere else instead. 
Um, Spick and Span? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, that's another one which um, is very common. It means that the thing you're referring to is clean and tidy. So the house is all Spick and Span, ready for the visitors coming. The children are at school today, so I want to make sure the house is uh, spick and span. Uh, very common, that. Very common. We need to clean to get this house spick and span before uh, we receive our visitor today. Um, so spick and span is how we describe an office, maybe? Oh, a brand new office. So spick and span. Yeah, beautiful. Really beautiful. Spick and span. So you can use that. The person equivalent of that, if you're talking about a person being ready to go to work or looking professional or wearing a suit, you can say, oh, look at you, all suited and booted. Suited and booted. Yeah, it's a phrase I hate. I had a boss that used to keep saying that. I want to see you all here tomorrow, suited and booted. God, blame me. That was, uh, that was awful. Suited and booted. I think it comes from the military, I think. You know, they used to be very strict with their employees. Uh, I don't think they are now. I don't think they'd be allowed to be. But, um, yeah, suited and booted is another one. Um, odds and ends, referring to miscellaneous or small, unimportant items or things you need to do. For example, um... Uh, looking at my table, in front of me here, there's lots of odds and ends sitting on it, remote controls, some uh, chargers for the telephone, some ornaments, uh, a chess set, all just little odds and ends that I need to tidy away. And uh, also, if someone asks you, what are you doing tomorrow on your day off? You can say, oh, just odds and ends, nothing special. Black and white, you know, things which are very straightforward. I'm sure you know that one, black and white. Oh, this situation is never black and white. We never say white and black, okay? I know a few of you in your countries, you put um, uh, white first. We don't. We always put black first. I don't know why that is, but we do. Just a couple more. Uh, bread and butter, that's referring to our income or our sense of provision. So, for example, I can say, oh, well, I have to go to work now, earn the bread and butter. Uh, down and out is how we describe someone who is destitute or unfortunate. For example, that beggar that sits outside the shop near where I live, he isn't down and out I think he's uh, probably um, a dishonest person, uh, but there's a lot of down-and-out people, destitute people. We refer to them as down-and-out. They can be collectively called that as a noun, or the down-and-outs as well. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, which reminds me, um, I was passing... Uh, the Wayside Club in Glasgow the other day. That's a very famous place uh, for down and out people to go. They can get a bed for the night uh, if they're homeless. Um, they do some great work. Uh, they really do. Um, I think that's operated by the Legion of Mary, uh, one of the local religious charities, I think. Um, yeah, uh, I can see they're still operational. They've been there for... A long, long time. Good people. Really good people. Um, sick and tired uh, is another one. It means to be very annoyed or fed up with something. Oh, I'm sick and tired of my boss treating me badly. I'm sick and tired of my wife complaining. Uh it doesn't actually mean you're sick, okay? So sick and tired simply means that you are angry or bored with something, but you might not actually be tired, okay?
Okay. I'm quite enjoying these. Uh, so I'll do a few more <laughs> because uh, uh, I, I quite like this. Under lock and key is another one referring to something that's secured with a locking mechanism. So if you have something of value, you can put it under lock and key at home or take it to the bank and say, can you keep this under lock and key? And the bank will say, yeah, sure. I'll put it in the safe. Um, salt and pepper, you know, two things which are completely different, just like the real salt and pepper. Thunder and lightning, well, that's when we describe a storm that's not metaphorical. Um, by and large, meaning generally or for the most part. So if someone says, do you like the Spice Girls? I can say, well... By and large, yes, I do. Um, do you like Celine Dion? No. So you only use it in positive situations, okay? Uh, when you're going to say uh, about the amount of the positive thing, okay? So, yeah, by and large, I like the Spice Girls. Um, do you like Italian food? By and large, yes. Is your project finished yet? By and large, Yes, by and large. Bells and whistles. Oh, this is a very common one, especially when you come across something new. Uh, you can say, for example, um, uh, oh, look at this. Oh, bells and whistles. It's when something new comes with lots of buttons and things for you to turn and twist and little bits. Uh you know, you can say that it, it's full of bells and whistles. Uh, speaking of bells, if you do ever go to a church, um, some people might say, oh, what was it like? Did you actually go to that church? Wasn't it all just smells and bells? Meaning, wasn't it just incense and bell ringing? Because, you know, in... in Traditionally, in, in Catholic ceremonies, it is all smells and bells. Uh, so a lot of people use that as a criticism of Catholicism. Uh, wasn't it all smells and bells? Come to my church. It's just books. <laughs> yeah. Fish and chips? Well, you know that one. Uh, and there we are. So those are loads of idioms which go together. You know, when you have two parts, two words... You put them together and you get a really nice uh, set of idioms there. So very good. There's pros and cons to using them. Make sure you use them right and don't reverse them. Uh, you can use them usually in any tenses with the addition of the verb to be. It will be spick and span. Um, I, I will be left high and dry. Uh, for example, I was left high and dry. Yeah, they fit in all the tenses. So just keep that in mind as well. There we are. So idioms for today. The main one being weird and wonderful. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, don't worry if you don't remember any of these. Just slowly try to bring them in to your conversations as uh, you go forward. All right. Um, see you all. Take care. Bye. Bye.